Hi there. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to accessorize your living room. I'm Erin Valencic, an award-winning interior designer and real estate developer based in Los Angeles. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to accessorize your living room. You're going to learn how to choose accessories and how to place and style them so you'll achieve a finished look at any budget. Click the link in the description to download some of my favorite accessories and vendors to inspire you and give you useful ideas for your own space. You'll want to follow along in the video with that document. Let's get started. As you start to look for accessories for any kind of tabletop in the home, you definitely wanna make sure that you're pulling together the color palette of the room with the accents that you're placing. I tend to really like white accessories or kind of an ivory or an eggshell, so that's generally what you're gonna see in most of my rooms with a couple little pops of color here and there. But depending on the space, accessories are a great way to bring that color palette together if you need just a little extra pop or to continue just telling a story. I find that white accents look really beautiful on darker wood furniture, so in a lot of ways, a light accessory um, in a white or an ivory is going to be a really popular choice and can kind of look great in any space. So you see here, I've got a real range of finishes and kind of shapes and styles. I've got these mid-century table lamps. I love the twisted kind of fluted shape and they're vintage. I have a pair of them. Um, I mix and match them room to room. Sometimes I use both, sometimes I use one, but because it's white and very sculptural, to me, it's a lamp that really looks like a decorative accessory. So I think that's quite fun. I also love little groupings. So these are beautiful ivory vases. I've had them forever. Um, they look beautiful by themselves, but they look great together. And one thing that I like to look for are tall accessories. I find that a lot of people just go with the small little vase and scale really matters with accessories. The bigger, the better. I'd rather have fewer, larger objects than a bunch of dinky little things. Speaking of dinky little things, this is a great way to display small accessories if you have them, which is in a grouping. I received these as a gift years ago. I love, love, love them, but they're a little bit small. And so I've stacked some books here as well in my color palette, the black and white. I'm putting this blue cover on the top because it brings in a little bit of fun and kind of mixes it up a little. Um, and then I have this other cutie. He's adorable, a little bud vase, but I mean, you can't just have that sitting by itself on this huge table with this huge mirror above it. The scale is just completely off. And these two, um, although they look beautiful and they could sit there by themselves, I think that when you add that third, it just finishes it off so nicely. So little things are great as layering pieces in the entire accessory story that you're kind of telling. And we start over here with some nice height. We kind of move down to the lower pieces, stack these on some books for a little bit of prominence. Again, if I like just put them off by themselves on the table, it's a little bit underwhelming. And books um, are great styling accessories. Always pull them together in your color palette, but they also kind of want something on top of them by the time you've laid them down on their side like so. So this, I think, works really well. And then as we kind of come back up for some height on the end, I've got this cool green glass vase. These are just artificial magnolias. I've had them forever. Um, they travel with me home to home, room to room. Sometimes I don't use them, sometimes I do, but I do like that they've got that lightness. They, got that, they have that ivory kind of color with these flowers and they look very real. I've twisted them to make them very wild. You know, um, artificial greenery comes very stiff and straight when you kind of get it right out of the package. So you definitely want to manipulate them and so they have a little bit of a natural flow to them. And then as you see, I've kind of bookended this space with height and the lower pieces in the middle both slightly offset. You never want to space things perfectly. A little bit of asymmetry is really good when it comes to accessorizing in terms of placement, like these kind of go together, those kind of go together. Um, and then behind, we've got this really beautiful mirror. I picked this up at Home Goods for $70. They have a great selection of mirrors. And again, bigger is better. You really can never go wrong if something is so big that it just barely fits, but you can definitely go wrong by having something very small that just doesn't work on the wall. Um, this mirror is almost the size of this cabinet, so it works out really nicely. And I like the big, thick frame. 
because again, it's taking up visual space as opposed to a mirror frame that's really, really thin and delicate. Um, so for this, it's more about that color, that richness. And if you're standing here, it kind of pulls in a little of the richness that's in these magnolias. And it also ties together with the accents of the gold and a little bit of the richness that comes together in this um, book cover. And this mirror actually has a little bit of blue and red, which is also in this book cover and the red is also in these flowers. So as you get closer, you notice that those tones really harmonize well together. But accessorizing is all just mix and match and play until you get something that you go, yeah, that looks good. And you know, you might come back two weeks later and be like, oh God, I'm really over these, or I don't like that lamp anymore, and move it to another room. But that's kind of the fun of it, is you can constantly be playing with your accessories. Um, this cabinet also has two areas on both sides. They don't have to have something, but I feel like it needed it. So I stuck a magazine pile over here, chose a black and white magazine, put that on top for a reason. And then over here I have a black eagle sculpture. Got tired of him in the other room, so he lives down there now for a while. And, you know, ultimately they're both dark, so they don't grab your eye on the black furniture because they're secondary. This is the first space that you look, and then if you glance down, you feel that like, oh, there's something there, it's kind of finished, but it's not screaming at you. If I was to put a white accessory in front of this black piece, so down here, it's really gonna be very attention grabbing. And as you walk in, you're probably gonna look at the area of highest contrast, which would be down there. So I purposely chose dark pieces to kind of finish off that space, um, but they also kind of hide and disappear for that very reason. So when it comes to accessorizing, you'll notice that I'm always talking about white or light accessories. Um, I find them to be really pleasing in any interior, and they go with any color palette, which makes them incredibly versatile. So if you're gonna be investing in some really nice vases or objects, um, I'd really encourage you to go with a light color palette because they always look great and you can move them around into any space, and they're very, very versatile. I also really like to do small groupings, always starting with a tall vase. This one's about, I think, 21, 22 inches high. Uh, I find that most people opt for very small, short little vases, and unless you have a really small space that that vase is going in, your walls are big, the TV it's sitting next to is tall, like you need taller accessories. So scale is a really important place to start. I'd much rather have one tall vase than two short vases, because the tchotchke little dinky sizes, they never look that great. So we've got this, um, this is by a ceramicist called Marina Kim. She's a Los Angeles uh, ceramics artist and I really love her work because she does this beautiful subtle texture and it's not truly white, like stark white. It's more of a bone kind of ivory color which is really, really more pleasing for interiors than super, super, super glossy white. It's also a little bit of a matte finish so it kind of just glows and it really is a nice addition to any room. I like the geometric shapes. You can see these two vases kind of very much have a similar vibe, but they're not exactly the same. And then this one back here has the black and white top. These objects um, I also picked up at a cute store. I'm not really sure who they're from, but I've used them all over my house in multiple different rooms. I'll stick them in the coffee table, I'll use them together, I'll use them apart. Um, funny little odd bizarre shapes like this they're always good. They look great sitting on a stack of books. You don't really know which way is up or there's no front and back. So they become very versatile objects. So as you start kind of collecting and styling your rooms a little bit more, you'll find that like weird little things like this are fantastic styling accessories uh, just for that reason because they add a little bit of quirky shape um, to any room. And I think with accessories, it's always fun to have something uh, thrown in that's got a little personality. Maybe it's a, uh, an animal object or a lion face or a weird bird. You know, there's all kinds of little quirky things that can be really fun. And then it's not just like beautiful, serious vase, box, books. Um, plus it just adds another shape. And as you start looking for accessories to pull together, having that variety of shapes, but that the colors all coordinate, um, make it much more pleasing to the eye. And also, anytime you're styling a dark surface, the lighter accessories really stand out. So you get more visual credibility for them. Uh, as you can see, you know, if you look at this TV speaker, for instance, I want it to disappear. So I did a dark cabinet under it because I purposely don't want you to see it. But I do want you to see my beautiful accessories and I want these to be the stars of the show. So if I were to put a black vase on this dark cabinet, you wouldn't even really see it. So again, thinking about light and dark as you're accessorizing your spaces, 
is really like game, you know, the, the most important trick of the game is to let those things be seen and to realize that the tonality from light to dark is going to either benefit you or hinder you. If you're styling a dark bookcase, I would never, ever, ever put anything dark on a dark bookcase unless you don't want to see it then what's the point of having it there? Um, and I would also probably layer photos in the back to lighten up the dark cavities of a dark bookcase. Um, you'll see that in my work. We do that a lot in the kitchen, beautiful bookshelf that we did in Montecito. We used huge photographs to take up that visual space and then we layered objects and such in front of it. So those are some great tips. Um, books are also incredible styling accessories. You know, keep them in your color palette and they become very versatile room to room. And you can really kind of freshen up a space quickly and easily by just shopping your own house. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it below and subscribe to my channel. Also, click the bell so you know when I post a new episode. Feel free to leave any questions or comments. If you're remodeling your kitchen, bathroom, or interiors, you're gonna wanna check out my courses on AaronVDesign.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at AaronVStyle.